And then the pastor comes out and it's Tim Chatham. You know, he's the, the guy who was carrying the book on Romans. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's the guy. And, um, and he starts preaching on Romans chapter seven. He was in Romans for like two years. <laughs> and good. so I was, I was, uh, so I was, it was Romans chapter seven and he starts preaching and I, this funny thing starts to happen on the way to the forum. Um, while he's preaching, every kind of word he's saying, every sentence he's saying is resonating as true in my mind, in my heart. I don't know why. I'm just like, what is this? This is crazy. I can't believe. And he was preaching the gospel. I mean, it was like God. So he kept like lacing the whole sermon with the gospel. Yeah. Like it was gospel, gospel. And it was the first time in my life that I had actually heard and understood the gospel. And and I was like, this is good news. Mm -hmm. Like, why haven't I heard this before? And it turned everything I understood religion was on its head. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, yeah. this is amazing. And and he's really good at that because from what I understand, maybe you know better than me, but I think when I heard him speak and I talked to him after, he said his dad was a pastor and he kind of hated, he kind of despised for a while the whole church gig, kind of fell away. And then he says, hey, I want it to be a church that's really reality, right? I want to be a church that's really real and really, you know, kind of, you know, low yeah. church. Yeah, and, and he was that, he was very, he was really good at that. Like, Tim was always very transparent about yeah. his own, like, kind of sinful past. And so it, you could, it created this environment in my church of where you could be real. Yeah. Like, you could actually just say, hey, this is what I'm going through. Like, so no one, it wasn't like this, like, legalistic church where people were afraid to talk about yeah. sin, um, which was, I really appreciated about Tim. But, um, and so after the sermon, what his hour long sermon, he <laughs> leaves this, he said, you know, there's people on the side and I didn't want him to stop preaching. I just was mm -hmm. like, keep talking, like, don't stop, don't stop. And, uh, he said, after he finished, he said, there's people in, from the prayer ministry on the side of the auditorium if you want prayer for anything. And so uh, it was kind of that moment again. And then the worship band started playing for like 30 more minutes. Um, and so it was that, another moment where I was like, do I do this? If I walk over to the side, like it could be embarrassing. People might be watching me. The people who invited me here could be watching. And so... I was like, whatever, I'm here. I'm just going to do this. And I walked over to the side and I walked up to a stranger. And once again, Christian fantasy come true. <laughs> I said, hey, I don't know what I believe, but I'm here. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, let me pray for you. And he laid hands on me and prayed for me when it was still legal in California <laughs> to do that. And, um, and then he, and I was just like, why does this random straight dude love me so much? Mm -hmm. Like, how does he, like, why, why does he care so much about me? And, um, and so then I walked back to, I thanked him. I walked back to my seat and I sat down. Everyone else was standing up and singing and worshiping. I sat down cause I was just so freaked out by everything. The, the sermon, the music, the prayer. And then suddenly the Holy spirit was just like, wow, so cool. and God in that moment just revealed himself. It was like a road to Damascus wow. moment. It was so powerful. And God was like, in that moment, I'll never forget. He just, not audibly, but in my mind, God was like, I'm God. It was like Paul when he says, you know, he, he was caught up in the third yeah. heaven. It felt like yeah. that. You know, it felt like I was caught up in the presence of God or Isaiah in the temple. Yeah. Like, uh, I just caught up in his presence for, you know, uh, like five, ten seconds or whatever it was. And God was like, I'm God. Jesus is my son. Heaven is real. Hell is real. The Bible is true. Welcome to my mm -hmm. kingdom. <laughs> and I just was like, oh! and I just started bawling uncontrollably wow. like for the next 25 minutes i was crying and doubled over was heaving and crying and and then i i was crying because I, of I, I because of conviction of sin but i was also crying because i had just met jesus mm -hmm. and i was like whoa and it was like the curtains had parted and i could see the truth for the first time in my life i, I knew i finally knew the meaning of mm -hmm. life i was like <laughs> like this is amazing i know the meaning of life now i know where i came from what i'm doing here and where i'm going and god and then i i, I collected myself after the sermon after the service and i drove home i mean i don't even know how i drove home because i was just uh, such a wreck and i got in bed to take a nap and 
it happened again. God was like, let me show you some more of my glory. <laughs> God, and I, and I just immediately burst into tears again. I jumped out of my bed, and in the middle of my bedroom, I said, God, you have my whole life. Mm -hmm. I'm yours. Like, done. And I knew, I knew in that moment that homosexual behavior was a sin. I knew that it was no longer my identity. I knew that dating guys was no longer a part of my life, but I didn't care because I was like, uh, I just met Jesus and I'm going with that guy. <laughs> like for like good riddance to that old life. Cause I don't mm -hmm. want that. Praise God. And, uh, and uh, that was September 20th, 2009. And, you know, I still, you know, I still have some vestiges of same sex attraction. Like I'm not attracted to women yet, mm -hmm. or I don't know what, but, but it doesn't matter to me. Like, it's like, I'm more than happy to be single and celibate, celibate for the rest of my life. I don't care. Like the fact, the fact that I have eternal life and that I'm in the kingdom of God, like, I don't care. You know, it's like, I it's like Paul says, I count everything as loss because of it was rubbish because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Like I don't, I could live under a bridge for the rest of my life. It doesn't matter. <laughs> In, well, LA, you might have to, right? Is it starting to get that way? <laughs> right, I know. Kidding. That's wrong. Yeah, yeah. sorry. So that's another topic. Yeah. But um, so that, yeah, that was uh, 12 years ago, a little bit of, yeah, 12 years ago. And um, I'm still just as in just awe of God's grace on my life. Like, you know, why God, why me? You know, God, there's hundreds of thousands of gays and I live in Hollywood. <laughs>